where are you from? Where are you coming from? I'm coming from Rhode Island. I'm I was raised in Rhode Island. Um, I'm also from Arizona in a sense. Um, it's where I was born, and it's where my dad's side of the family has always been. So, got that kind of dual identity. But Rhode, Rhode Island's the easy answer. What's your role in the co-op? I'd consider myself an organizer. I do a lot of uh, brand and arts um, related stuff. I do UX UI design and and work on our pro- product roadmap. I spend more than half of my time just working as a grassroots organizer in the Rhode Island's co-op community and and broader um, social and economic justice organizing efforts. And and what Commonplace is and and is trying to do is is to solve, is to make it easier for local people to organize for the common good. And so I think it's very important that we at Commonplace are organizers and are not selling software as a service to organizers or god forbid following facebook's model and making a free product that organizers use to connect with their communities that's totally funded by like advertiser revenue and all of the like incentives are screwed up and it's not actually built for them my number one priority is to just be on the ground trying to make sense of what challenges people are facing in their efforts to work together and manage information and coordinate events and projects and things like that and conduct outreach and bring on new people and onboard them and catch them up to speed. There's all of this information out there. There's all of these, we were talking about this earlier, there's all of these offers and all of these needs, you know, everybody's got something they need. Everybody's got some way that they wish they could help, you know, that would be really rewarding for them. And I think we need tools to help us do that that don't extract capital from our communities because then what's the point you know you're trying to shovel the sea it's cool it's cool (laughs) and 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 would you say commonplace is in one or more of the following uh startup conversion existing oh it's a startup so coming here is a commitment Uh you came from rhode island what are you trying to um what are you seeking at the at this conference i want to meet people i want to know what's going on there goes the train choo-choo um, yeah, I, I want to meet people. I want to learn about what else is out there that is, like, like who's out there that's trying to do the stuff that we're trying to do, you know, um, and how can we work together more, or how can, how can we learn from what you've already done? There's plenty of things that I think are trying to do something very similar to what we're trying to do, but maybe for a different community, um, or with a slightly different, like, approach, and it's, this is just a really cool opportunity to get to, get to, put a lot of faces to names or find out about projects that like oh you've like been through what we're going through right now or or been through something that we're gonna have to go through and and, you know I'm just interested in like learning more than anything I guess what has helped commonplace the most okay what commonplace is and who it is and what we're trying to do has like changed over time right it's it's evolved a lot now we have eight people on the team including me a lot of that growth has been in the last six months um so that's that's new and that's a very different thing than what commonplace was when we first came up with that name two and a half years ago but yeah the the one continuity the one thing that's 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 always helped is just like getting out of our heads getting out of theory getting out of like uh just like researching and writing in a little document and then being like oh is that perfect like you gotta you gotta just share and say get people's input or not even worry about that and just be like okay who am i trying to help by building a co-op like what needs are we looking to address and how can we as people working on this pitch in there and also how can we get those needs dressed ourselves and like find out what systems already exist. It's just, it's this like constant rolling dynamic social process. What's something unexpected that's helped your, your effort? I'm going to give a personal answer. My mom is a, um, has been getting her own like residential landscaping company off the ground for the last few years and ever since I moved back to Rhode Island I've been doing some jobs with her and then as I've kind of gotten the hang of that I've been doing some jobs with clients of my own where it's it's just a me thing do a lot of odd jobs it's not only landscaping but I 
do more landscaping than anything else. That really is a stretch in the other direction. You know, just getting out there in the sun and digging around in the dirt and thinking about what plants should go where and what, what plants are here right now and how do they get here and what implications do they have for the ecosystem and the habitat, you know. What's up with the bugs? What are they doing? What's native and non-native? The water flowing and, and having to ask those questions and think about the interests of non-human things, this wordless work where you're just digging around in the muck and sweating and taking in the sun, that has been hugely helpful in both my staying, I think, like healthy and sane, you know, and not just thinking about governance and business models and product roadmaps and stuff all of the time, you know, getting a break from that, getting a break from the computer, and also grounding, like spiritually grounding in in some ways what it's all about for me, which is beauty of life in the world or something, you know? Like, like there's a bigger thing going on here and you can get lost in the weeds. And it's been very, very helpful. And I think this is an unexpectedly helpful thing. It's been very helpful to, yeah, be pre-revenue and need to do odd jobs and like go out there with a shovel and, and engage with, with the world on those terms. What type of support do you wish that uh, your co-op had? We're gearing up for a big media and fundraising push sort of in parallel with our newly expanded development team um, starting to, to build and iterate on our, our platform. We need a lot of kinds of help. We, we, we just need like ad, ad, advice, people who have been around, people out of state in different parts of the country or the world that are working on similar problems in different contexts and have maybe been through it in one way or another. Uh, I think it would be great to have some kind of like regularly meeting advisory council to have those kinds of conversations and make sure that we're not reinventing the wheel. So that's a big thing. And then, and then funding, if anybody wants to help us think about finance, I feel like that's our one big gap, you know, like, like we, we do and, we, and we're serious about being sustainable economically. And, and we, uh, a, bu a bunch of us want to be able to make a living doing this and, and think that there's a real value add in the work that we're already doing, much less like as we build traction. But it is very hard to like build a platform competitive with the incumbent giant platforms that are VC funded. It, it, it's, it's really hard to make the numbers work on a, on a tech startup that needs years of runway and, you know, sometimes developers are used to and expect hundreds of thousands of dollar salaries. You can't start from part-time that people need to be able to like lock in and work and for a while before it's going to be revenue generating. A anyway, um, we're, we're about to launch a big crowdfunding campaign and like in, in, in media, it would be great to find somebody who's just like knows about crowdfunding and has been through that before. Cause I think that that's enough to get us uh, going, but like down the line crowd investment or loans or grants or I, there's like all of these different ways of getting money out there and it is it's a lot harder for a platform co-op but i know it can be done and i know we can innovate on it and and, and people have been doing that and so that that's a that's a big kind of help or if you the listener are uh, watching this and are sitting on you know maybe you like bought a really good nft in 2021 and you like made a hundred million dollars and you're like man this is ruining my life i <laughs> i i miss when i was broke that it, it wouldn't ruin my life if you were to give it to to me to me and to commonplace <laughs> so you know just just hit just hit me up uh what's your f been the most useful or best part of the conference so far for you uh, just hanging around or going to things like between and after events and just having these like one-on-one -on -one conversations with people has been has been really awesome just like finding out what people are up to and having like unstructured convos is 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 really valuable um yeah is commonplace um are you on i'm guessing y'all aren't in the same city or the same locality are y'all in the same locality for the most part yes oh, okay um, so where have y'all gotten the most help locally we are, almost all of us live in Providence. I think the big two that I would flag would be, I mentioned them before, but Fuerza Laboral in Central Falls. I didn't know about co-ops when I started working on Commonplace. And when I found out about them, I started asking around who's interested in these. I got put in touch with Raul at Fuerza 
almost immediately. And he had like an hour call with me and gave me a great lay of the land and got me involved with the cannabis justice organizing and was part of my my personal origin into this space. And and then, you know, they they I think are 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 great and have been showing up to and, and, and helping out and supporting co op. They're they're not a co op themselves, they're a nonprofit, but um, they're doing important work and important work with the with the Spanish speaking community in Rhode Island as well, which no one else is doing. Um, and and uh, so there's that. And then there's the Social Enterprise Greenhouse, which does not have as much co-op programming, but have I have been taking more and more of an interest in co-ops, and I, uh, it seems are, are building that out. Um, one of their uh, people, uh, Stephanie, is, is here. Um, and we've been through two of their programs that have met a lot of people through that and accessed some opportunities. So th those are those are the two like specific centers that I would that I would name. Awesome. Um, now's the opportunity for you. If you haven't done it enough, and I don't think you have, uh, shamelessly plug your co-op. I'm going to shamelessly plug my co-op to you specifically by giving you your gift. Oh yeah, we talked about this. Uh. Uh, uh, All right, I'm knocking things over, folks. I think I'm out of frame, which is great, because uh, no, no shame, no embarrassment. Don't even, don't even, don't even sweat it. Don't even worry about it. Here we go. Here we go. Uh, one of our members, very talented. Camila um, does uh, does printmaking and made uh, this lino cut carving before the conference, and on this very fine paper printed uh, uh, these little lamps with the little commonplace dot co op. Um, are y'all gonna, gonna use that for the crowdfunding? I think we will either use may, maybe these prints specifically, if not, surely something like them. Um, Camila has made a lot of things like this, and I, I would I would love to see um, her her work being kind of offered as as perks for donors of different levels. Sweet. Um, so you get to pick between um, red, black on white, or black on gray. They might be numbered. It looks like this one, that there's not as many that you have taken. Like, um, I, this red one is so beautiful. I do want it, but I'll take the one that hasn't been taken as much. Uh, you've uh, given me the mic and invited me to plug myself, yeah. which means uh, that you've given me entirely too much power. <laughs> and you can't stop me now. Um, listen, you at home. The world is changing. The future and the past are uniting in the present. Things are going somewhere. There is reason to hope. There is uh, like so much going on, dude. Like this has been a very energizing conference. I've met a lot of really cool people. There's like a lot of cynicism out there. Um, a lot of people I think are, are interested in feeling like they're a part of something bigger than themselves, um, are, feel like they're hurting under our current economic system, and, um, and, and yet there's kind of a prevailing feeling uh, that maybe has only just started to shift, that we're at the end of history, that, you know, this is as good as it gets, you know? Look, we've got so many commodities at the market. Have you been to Walmart recently? I mean, you can get, you can get a widget in any color. Um, and I, I don't know, I, before I started working on what is now commonplace and before I started learning about some of these solidarity economy projects that initially inspired me to get involved, I, I felt pretty cynical on, oh, I can just like vote for a guy or something. I 
don't know what is going to happen next, but I'm like confident that things are going to change. And I am feeling more and more confident that like the pieces are in place for us as like human beings who value each other and value our world and value our places. There's an opportunity for us to, to work together in a way that was never possible before and to get somewhere nicer, you know, and, and to feel good while doing that work and to have fun while doing that work. I look forward to more and more people learning about this this stuff that's going on in the worker co-op movement and in, and in others that's right now relatively obscure, not so talked about. Wherever you are, like your locality, your state, your town, your county, wherever you're at, like there's something interesting happening. It's not a once every four year decision. It's a daily decision. It's a living life decision. And so let's get it, right? Also, I'm thinking of going on a cross country road trip to everybody's place and checking out what they're doing. So hit me up if you live anywhere in North America. Goodbye. Yeah, and uh, part of my reciprocity is uh, we talked about the trip and all that. Um, and, and, you know, that, that was like a big, a big part of a big build up towards something like the USFWC, people traveling around. So I'll be in touch with you about what, you know, what, what, what can be learned from that, from Gio's experience and, and that. All right. So thanks so much for your time. Thank you. Yeah. yeah it's a pleasure. Breaking news. Whoa, I bet you thought you saw the last of me. You didn't. I'm back here in Rhode Island. It is November 14th. I'm wearing a tie uh, because I'm about to head over to the launch of Rhode Island's Worker Co-op Alliance. Super excited for that. And I wanted to let you guys know, here at the end of the video, you made it this far in. Um, our media campaign at commonplace.coop is about to start. Uh, we're doing a digital magazine, multimedia thing. Uh, in January, we're gonna put out a print zine as well. And what we're doing is we're covering everything going on with co-ops in Rhode Island. It's a really interesting scene. Rhode Island, greatest state in the union. I think it's safe to say Providence, the Big Apple, greatest city on earth. Uh, you're going to want to check it out. Uh, head on over to, uh, I've got a note, uh, commonplace.coop, you know, just enter that little URL into your thing, browser, that's what it's called. And yeah, put in your email and we will let you know as soon as it starts to go live. There's so much exciting stuff going on right now. And next year we are hoping to take it on the road. So if this succeeds, if you like it, you know, uh, let me know where in the world you live and we'll be there. Uh, thanks a lot. Thanks to Geo. You guys are great. Thanks to the conference organizers. Uh, goodbye.